a different perspective. Invite your friend to come with you to church. Love God, love people. It's not, a, not hard commandments. I mean, you know, it, it really isn't. You know, they might not know Jesus. You don't know if they will. They don't know if you'll argue. You don't know if they'll argue with you all the way home. But it might have come with you. You know? Hopefully you're not having pastor all the way home. And that pastor, you know, he wear blue jeans with a tie. Surely his mama raised him better than that. Okay, I'm trying to be all things to all people here, you know. I used to get my GQ magazine. I know you shouldn't put the put a tie with jeans, but I guess it's the new thing, so I do it. You, you know, I, I, I do it. Um, that way, those that think that a pastor should wear a tie, I got my tie for you. <laughs> those that want me to be life applicable, I'm wearing blue jeans. <laughs> now, um, kind of straight away from the text here. So. <laughs> These guys were very creative. They held in their heart and were very tenacious on doing whatever it took to bring their friend before Jesus. Oftentimes when, when we come before Jesus with something that we need help with, the answers that we receive perhaps is not what we expected to hear. I don't know that when the man was lowered down after all of that, you know, he's coming down, and I would imagine it was quite a disturbance, you know. It's like people standing behind you making faces, you know, when you're in public. And they're laughing at them, and you think they're, you know, Jesus is preaching, and God is coming down through the roof, yeah. He's expecting, you know, Jesus to touch him, and he's healed, and Jesus to say, you know, you know, do you believe, and he's healed, and Jesus says, son, your sins are forgiven. It's kind of like, man, all the way just to go through the roof and come down for, you know, somebody to poke at me and remind me of my sin. And how many people in here like to be reminded of your sin? I hope you're reminded of your sin every day because if you are, then the Holy Spirit's working in your life. And, you know, I had a lady one time that told me, she said, you know, Pastor, uh, she said, man, you, you, I don't like it that you make me feel uncomfortable every day or every time I come to church and, you know, I don't get up on Sunday morning and say, Oh, most powerful and holy God, God Almighty, help me to go in and make somebody have a miserable day in church today. I really don't do that. I really don't do that. But there's a good possibility that when we open ourselves up to the truth, to Jesus, because he said he was the truth and he was the way. And for those of us, especially who are in Christ, and if Christ is in you, then his Holy Spirit the promised great counselor is going to be working on, in you to mold you into the image of Christ. You're going to be convicted. When I, when I do something that's wrong, most of the time I'm convicted about it. And my prayer is that I'm obedient enough to confess it before God and to deal with it. But we can never take lightly the issue of sin. And I, we're kind of on a miracle kick here the last few weeks. And I, at the same time, I'm on a sin kick. Because there's something else that I think we can glean from this teaching in here is that Jesus didn't say, sons are you're forgiven. And then after he challenged the Pharisees and they questioned who was he to do that, that he was a blasphemer, that nobody has the power to forgive sins except God. And that's right. That's a true statement. The issue was Jesus is God. I can't forgive your sins against heaven. I can forgive your sins against me. And I'm supposed to do that. So they called him a blasphemer, and then Jesus says, well, what would be easier for me to say to forgive the sins or to tell him to pick up his mat and go? And then he tells him to pick up his mat and go. But, but you know, what he, what he did was he told him to pick up his mat and go. To pick up his mat and go. Jesus didn't say, hey, man, you're healed. Let me help you out of here. Let me carry your mat for you. Okay, and if we flip over into Matthew, which I think is in your bulletin because I changed scriptures on you, but uh, I think God wants us to look. There's another paralytic man in there. And again, Jesus tells him to pick up his mat and leave. But the issue is, there's something that we need to do too. For those of us who just said, I once was lost, but now I'm saved. You need to pick up your mat and go. You need to do that. 
I don't know how many times I have people come to me and they say, Pastor Dave, I'm lacking direction in my life, or I'm needing this, and I'm needing that, and I don't feel God's presence, and, 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 and this isn't happening, or that isn't happening, and we pray and we talk, but oftentimes I find myself in a hard place because I'm praying the whole time I'm listening to them, oh God, please help them not to hate me for what I have to say. But the Holy Spirit is, you need to tell them. If you want to have a relationship with God, you need to get in the Word. Are you involved in a Bible study? Are you involved in a men's group? Are you involved with the ladies' group? Because if you're not, Sunday might not be enough for you. For some, maybe it is. If you get the blessing that you can come in here and listen to me, that in itself would be a miracle. I hope you're hearing from God. But if you can come in and, and you're touched and you're fixed, that's great. But I'm going to tell you, if you want to grow in your relationship with God and to feel His presence in your daily life, then you need to include Him in your daily life. You need to, to, to meet with Him in the morning, like Kenny was saying. We need to be ready to meet with Him. We need to constantly invite Him to meet with us. If you want to know and, and feel the power of God's Word, you need to be in the Word. If you want to, to grow in your relationship and to grow spiritually, you need to get involved in a small group or a Bible study. And here at Fellowship, we try to be creative about it. We've got stuff meeting at people's homes. The ladies meet together. We've got people exercising out here. There's a weight loss group. The men are meeting on Monday nights. We've got people in here that are serving in ministry, and the ministries are kind of a community. But you need to sow into your life something that's going to yield some fruit. The other side of that coin is I'm constantly, and I ask Roberta to help me. I don't want you to be in church every night. Okay? You need to live your life God first. You need to live your life in a way that glorifies God. But don't get so active in so many different things that you lose track of the life that God is calling you. Because, see, your real walk in your ministry is right where God has you most of the time. In the school, in the work, in the job, on the street, in those places. That's where you need to let the love of Christ and God's Holy Spirit shine through to you. And if you say, if you say I want to be able to witness then you need to get in the Word and you need to learn some Scripture. You need to learn that about sin. All have sinned and fell short of the glory of God. Romans 6.23 The wage of my sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life. I am saved by grace, not by works, so I can't boast about it. While I was a sinner, Christ died for me. So there's nobody that needs to wait till they get it together. You need to know these things. You need to put them in your can. So when God calls you to rattle it and the Scripture comes out, they change people's lives. If you want to be a history maker and a life changer, you've got to get in the Word. You've got to take seriously the responsibilities that Jesus calls you to. Last week we closed on the note when we were looking at the, at the wedding at Cana when Jesus turned the water into wine. Mary's, Mary's message to the servants was just do what He tells you. Jesus said, if you love me, keep my commandments. There's people right here in this room that I know are struggling with sin issues. There's people in this room that I know that are dealing with habitualism. More importantly, God knows. Because He's talking to you right now. You can come to me all you want and you can ask me for prayer and I can lay hands in the power of Christ and pray on you. But you know what? You need to take up your mat and you need to walk. Okay? If you're struggling with alcohol, you need to quit going to the bar. If you're struggling with a drug problem and your stuff's all jibber-jabber in your head, you need to quit doing drugs. Okay? If you're having problems in your marriage because you're running around, you need to quit running around. Okay? If you're having issues at school because you're cheating on tests or you're not turning your homework in or you're not doing what you're supposed to do, then get it done. I know it's a hard message, and, I, and I'm, I'm sorry if I'm yelling at you. Okay? But folks, it's by choice. It's not by chance. It's a miracle of God that, we can, that I can say and I was lost and now I'm saved. I value that so much because I am so unworthy of God's love. Sometimes I just, I just can't understand how God could love me as much as He does. Because I know what's in here. And what breaks my heart is I know that God knows what's in here too. And that's got to break His heart. Just like He knows what's in your heart I mean, I'm not out robbing banks and I'm not running around with my wife and I'm not getting in fights and I'm not drinking. Praise God, I once was lost, but now I'm saved. But you got to step up. If you're looking for directives in life to help